I think many of you have heard of Ruby Motion. It's Ruby that runs on the iOS, so you can finally do Ruby on your iPhone. Uh, yay. <laughs> so here to speak to us about that is Amit Kumar. He's from Mumbai, India. He lives in New York. And are we good to go, Michael? Uh, sorry, we're making a technical adjustment here, so I will do a little soft shoot. <laughs> the, uh, I, I guess uh, I'm supposed to do the, uh, what is it, the Gangnam style? <laughs> That's enough of that. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not in five inch heels, though, so I, I got it easier than Brittany. <laughs> okay, are we good to go? Cool. Great, so here's Amit. Thank you. Thank you. So here I am. Uh, it has been great in San Francisco, uh, coming way all the way from India, Mumbai. So thank you, San Francisco, and thank you, Josh. So I'm here to talk about Rubyizing iOS development, uh, which is Ruby Motion. Um, I have been doing Ruby Motion for just a couple of months, um, and I would like to share my experience, learnings, how I started get, getting into Ruby Motion, and, and what I have been doing so far. Uh, but before I do that, uh, I would like to quickly introduce myself. I'm a Rubyist, doing Ruby development for almost four or five years, a consultant at Tata Consultancy Services Limited, um, uh, the company that manufactures cars. That's what I have been hearing from everyone. Whenever I say I work for Tata, oh, the company that manufactures cars. Well, Tata is a company that is into every business, business that you can think of. Um, that's my GitHub handle, Twitter, and my blog post. So I would like to do a quick survey. Um, how many of you in the crowd are Objective-C programmers and have done Objective-C in Xcode? And keep your hands holding. Uh, and how many of you love Objective-C? <laughs> OK, so basically I can, I can be safe. You know? I'm not going to be killed. <laughs> because you know, just a year before I started learning Objective-C, I thought of learning Objective-C, and this is what I and it up. <laughs> it's complicated. Yeah, everyone is talking about simplifying things. It was complicated, so I did not choose to go that route. And just in May like this, uh, this year, um, Laurent Sansonetti, he's a one-man army. He created Ruby Motion. It launched. Um, I saw that. I liked it. Um, kind of you know, paid for it. It's a paid license product. I bought it, um, enjoyed it, and I'm enjoying it. I have built three apps so far. One of them is going to be on App Store pretty soon. Uh, recently, uh, the one-man army becomes two-man army, uh, joined by Watson. Um, uh, Watson is his, is his uh, you know, handle on, on, the, on Twitter and other places. He's CEO from Japan. <coughs> so what is Ruby Motion and how Lauren defines Ruby Motion? So basically, Lauren says that Ruby, it's a revolutionary tool chain for building native iOS applications um, using Ruby language. Um, I define it as it's a neighbor's envy and coders delight, which brings happiness. So we'll see um, in the presentation the moments of happiness as a Ruby developer. Um, let's, let's dive deep. You know, what exactly is Ruby Motion? So Ruby Motion is a fork of a commercial fork of Mac Ruby, uh, Ruby implementation on Mac OS X. It compiles into optimized machine code. Um, so basically, now the source code of Ruby compiles into um, optimized version of machine code, which is converted into assembly language by LLVM. Uh, the, the Laurent rewrote LLVM for Ruby motion uh, from Mac Ruby because it was a fork from Mac Ruby. Um, it has automatic object memory allocation and reclaim, which is pretty cool. So that is the first moment of happiness, because I'm not going to deal with you know, memory allocation of objects and you know, for objects and then releasing them. I don't have to worry about that. Ruby Motion is going to take care of it. I'm happy. Next aspect, uh, aspect is it compiles the interface. So I'm, I'm sure every, everyone who has done a little bit of Objective-C or a, a heard about it, um, you know what is storyboards, what is nibs. So basically, you create interfaces and in interface builder of Xcode. Uh, what Ruby Motion does is you create your interfaces in your um, interface builder of Xcode and, and kind of get that XML file in your Ruby Motion application and Ruby Motion takes care of compiling it. So that's pretty neat. That's the second moment of happiness. 
because then I can design the interface in Xcode and still kind of import it in Ruby motion application. Uh, Ruby runtime is tightly integrated with Objective-C runtime. Um, we'll get into it what ac exactly it means. Um, one important aspect is it has the same ancestors as, as Objective-C, which means that all the classes that you have in Objective-C, you can kind of use that directly in your Ruby application, which is Ruby Motion. Let's look at an example. So what we see over here is in an array class, it's a blank array. Um, and if we see the ancestors, um, the array is the Ruby Motion class, or the Ruby class. The NS mutable array is the Objective-C class, and so on it goes all the way to kernel. So what we see is, you know, they, they share same ancestors, which means that potentially you can use objects or share objects between your Ruby code and your Objective-C code without any performance impact, which is pretty neat. So essentially, if you are building a Ruby motion application, you are actually building an Objective-C application because at the end of it, it compiles into executables which you get as an output from your Objective-C applications. There are differences here and then. Yes, we'll, we have seen that because you know, Ruby motion is pretty new. So let's look at in, um, you know, architecturally how it looks like. So what I've said that Ruby motion and Objective-C share the same runtime. They have the same ancestors, which is the foundation framework. And you can potentially call all the SDK APIs from your Ruby application, which is kind of cool. Uh, when I started, you know, learning Ruby Motion, um, there was a few questions that I asked myself, and I was asked by people around because, you know, that's what you know you have to answer questions. So, and I call them myths. So the first is, you know, th this question I was asked multiple times: Can I code in Ruby Motion without the pain of learning Cocoa Framework? I would request, you know, every every one of you to answer that question: Is it possible to do that? Do you think it's possible? Exactly, that was my answer. No, it's not. But rather, I feel if you are coding in Ruby Motion, you are more close to the Cocoa framework because as Ruby developers, we want to control things. By control, I mean not go and control everyone. By control, I mean you want to control, have a control on the code that you're writing. You don't believe in magic. You kind of, you know, I would like to build my interface myself with code. So we look at it in, in one of the most powerful, powerful aspect of Ruby motion. The second question I was asked, when there are frameworks like PhoneGap, um, if there are any, any I didn't ask that question, um, are, are any of you lover of PhoneGap-like frameworks? Okay. Yeah, so you know, there are uh, PhoneGap-like tools which kind of you know, does the same thing. Why should I care about learning Ruby motion? Um, my answer would be, let's look at the, the pros and cons of PhoneGap. The first is, it's very easy to you know, use it. You potentially code it in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and we all love that language, especially because JavaScript is, is the next big thing. Uh, but, but <laughs> yeah, so, but, but the, the, there are a few co co uh, you know, disadvantages, um, especially because you know, it's, it's a bridge. And whenever you have a bridge, you always hit the performance bottleneck. Um, and, and also, um, I don't know why Apple is not optimizing UI WebView. PhoneGap uses UI WebView, um, and it's a single thread uh, model. Um, so there is always a big performance bottleneck. Uh, it's one fourth of the performance that you will get in a native a application. Um, the, another thing is, you, have, you are basically limited to the support of uh, PhoneGap if you have to use the, the native APIs. Um, the most important as aspect of you know, using PhoneGap is um, debugging becomes extremely painful because f what essentially PhoneGap does is it uses the native JS bridge that Apple gives you um, to kind of make native, call, native API calls um, of, of, of the SDK. So if you have to debug that, it becomes really difficult to do that. So how do I download Ruby Motion? It's a, as I said, it's a licensed product. You have to pay $200, and probably there is something, there's a surprise at the end of the session. Uh, so keep your eyes open. Um, so you have to basically download it, um, and to get the full featured version, uh, you have to pay $200. Um, but trust me, if you, uh, um, after paying that, I never regret it, and probably you will not. Um, so after you have downloaded and installed, uh, one of the command that you have to, which, which kind of kicks off, kicks off you is the motion command, um, where you have the four options. The first is the motion create, which 
helps you to create a vanilla application. The motion activate, which activates the license. Um, it's pretty straightforward, updates software, the support command, which is kind of very, very, very cool because what happens is from your console, you have access to the support ticket system of Ruby Motion. So basically you say must motion support and it, it opens up the default browser on your machine. Uh, probably it's always Chrome. Um, and uh, you have certain f fields filled up already, which is your license key, um, the information about your uh, machine, and then only thing that you'll have to fill in is the, is the bug report that you're trying to file in or, or any feature request. There's one, go uh, one thing that you have to remember, one pro tip that I'll uh, uh, provide is, you know, if you, if you want to stick to a particular version, this is the command that you should always remember. Uh, motion update will update to the latest version of the, of the software. But if you want to stick to a particular version, um, you may have to use this. After you have created your first application, this is what it looks like. So you say motion create gogariku. Um, you have uh, the rake file. Um, you have the app delegate class, which is the point of delegation entry into the application. You have resources spec. Um, we'll talk about it uh, in the coming slides. Let's look at um, the, the motion rake command. So basically, what, what exactly is, you know, I'm sure every Ruby developer know what, what knows what is rake. Um, in Ruby motion, your bread and butter is rake. Uh, from the point of you developing an application to testing an application to deploy the application, you will be using rake all the time. The starting point is going to be the rake default command, which is kind of a command or, or just the rake command you, that basically builds your application and runs the application in the simulator. Um, the second one is the rake spec command. Um, you know what, what Rexpec does. Um, Ruby motion by default comes with a RSpec like framework, which is called Mac Bacon, which has been there for a long time, till, you know, till the time. Uh, and uh, what it does is it, 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 it has all the flavors of RSpec, um, syntactic sugar that we have used to in, in RSpec world. Um, rake build, which kind of just builds the application. Archive is, creates an IP, IPA file which you can distribute um, or you can push it to App Store. This is something that, you know, there are other uh, uh, commands as well, but uh, I'm not talking about it because as a new developer in Ruby Motion, this is only that I'm concerned about how should I build the application, how should I test it and deploy it, that's all. Uh, there is one more command which is very, very important, which is rake config command. So every, every iOS application has a, a bunch of configuration options, and this rake config command prop gives you or rather list down all the configuration options that you have in the application. So let's look at them um, a little closely. I would let you digest. Um, it has a lot of information here. The first one that you would be interested in, how should I you know, name the application, which is the, the name of your application. You can change these configuration options in your rake file, which we saw when we created the uh, you know, motion create gogariku. The second option is the delegate class. The app delegate is the entry point of delegation to your application. Then is the frameworks. There are a bunch of frameworks in Coco. Uh, the defaults are UI kit, foundation, and core graphics. Um, you can add more frameworks like core plot and any framework that you want to use in an application um, uh, in an array in your rake file. Um, the next option is the device family. It can be iPhone, iPad, or both depending on what you want or which platform are you, you are trying to focus. Uh, there are other configuration options that you know, I would like to talk about. Uh, there could be a, so basically what happens is um, in a Ruby motion application, when, when you fire rake, potentially what it does is it starts compiling your Ruby source code. And when it compiles, it by default compiles in alphabetical order, which means that there could, there could be a possibility that you have a class inheritance which does not kind of follow alphabetical order, which is like this. In this example, you have, you have a curves controller, which is dependent on main, which means that by default, Ruby motion is going to compile uh, curves and then main, but it will fail because you have a dependency. So basically what you are doing is uh, you are telling the compiler that, dude, you have to compile main and then, uh, then compile curves because there is a dependency chain. There is another thing which is a, the vendor project, which basically helps you to 
use external libraries in your Ruby Motion application, which is pretty neat because this is the latest addition in Ruby Motion, and I think uh, this is really powerful because it helps you to kind of use external libraries, which can be an Objective C library as well. So you look into that in the coming slides. Now we have seen um, all the configuration options. Um, so look, let's look at you know the the soul of Ruby Motion. That I call it soul because I loved it so much. I did not have any Objective C background or a Cocoa background when I started learning Ruby Motion, and the soul helped me to learn the Cocoa API more, which is called REPL, Read, Evaluate, Print Loop. So what I'm going to do is uh, do a quick demo, um, taking that risk. Um, usually you're, you should not be doing it, but I'm taking that risk because um, it, will, it will be much easier for me to kind of explain it to create the impact. So let's look at a demo. So what I have done is I have created a default application, which you have seen that. Uh, so if I list it, it's a Gogaruku application with default. I have a bundler uh, dependency management injected already. We'll talk about it, how to use bundler. But for the demo pur purposes, I'm just going to fire up the application. So let's look at it. By right now, what I have done is I have created a, a, a single controller with a blank view. And what I'm going to do is play with that view, um, add few controls, and we'll see how, how we can control everything that you see on your simulator from your console. So it is building, and the simulator is launched. Now you see that this is where you have the control. So let's grab the instance variable of the controller from console. So I'm using some syntactic sugar from bubble wrap, which is a Ruby. Ruby Motion gem. Um, we'll talk about it in just a minute. And I did a mistake. Okay. Come on. Did I spell it wrong? I'm controlling my nerves. Thank you. If I do a mistake, I will run away. I hope everything is right. Yes. Thank you. Love you guys. So I have now handle of the, the controller now. So what I'm going to do is, um, it has a view, which is blank. Let's change the background color. What, which color do you like? Blue, green? You guys. So I was able to change the color from the console, which is nice. OK. So now what, I'm, what, what I want to do is I, will, I want a control to be added on the fly. Let's see. Let's create a control first, which is a segment control. Um, UI segmented control. Controller nerves, no spelling mistakes. OK, it accepts an array. Um, let's create two elements. Hello. Patient. Attendees. <laughs> All right. If everything is right, it should create. It should create an object. Ooh, it did not go there because I have not added. So, let's add it to the view. So you can see that you know it's a Ruby syntax that I have been writing so far. I love it. <laughs> All right. Keep the fingers crossed. Ooh. So I was able to add uh, a control from command line, which is nice. Let's play with it. What I want to do is I would like to move it 200 pixels down and 100 pixels probably towards the right. Let's try that. 
Um, I'm going to use another Ruby motion gem, which is sugar cube. Um, and let's include that gem on the command line. All right, so the gem is loaded. Um, and I want to adjust the view controller.view dot subviews. All right. So I, I have handle of that particular view now. Let's move it 200 pixels down. You love 200, 100, 250, I'll make it 200. So I was able to move it. That's nice. Let's move, move it, you know, 100 pixels towards the right. Perfect. No, it does not. I don't, I don't like it. So maybe you can. So you can basically try, you know, continue playing with it. This is one way of playing with it. There is another way which is uh, really nice. If you just keep an eye on this particular object here, main, as I'm dragging, what I'm holding, I'm holding the, con the command key, and I'm moving, and if you see it is null, but if you go it here, you, guys, you can see that it changes to UI view because I'm hovering over UI view. Um, I can move it here, which is a segment control. Again, okay, this is nice. And if I click it, now you see that main has changed to the object that I have highlighted. See if I do self, who am I? Okay, so can I change it? Self.label, no I cannot. No, oh sorry. Okay, so I know that. Can I change it to something else? Hela. Everyone kind of love that, right? <laughs> yeah, I was able to change it. So hello changes to Hela. Cool. There is one more syntactic sugar that I would like to kind of show to you, which is you know if you want if you are playing with the, with this, you can see all the the hierarchy of classes of the window, which starts from UI window and goes all the way to the segment label, which we can't be changed it over here. All right, so I was successful. Demo completed. Cool. So you feel in control. I feel in control. This is another moment of happiness. So how many, what was the count again? Four. Four, thank you. Uh, there is an excellent thing you should check out, which is a uh, in-browser demo of Ripple. Um, Go to this particular link and you should see two, three applications and you can play with it. The build process, how does the build process happens? So it's a four step build process. The first step is compiling. So when you fire rake or when I fired rake in the, in the demo, what essentially happens is all your Ruby code is being compiled into machine code, which later on converts into assembly, lang assembly language with LLVM. The second step is linking. What RubyMotion does is um, the machine code that was generated, it links them with RubyMotion statically, and then an executable is created. It is the same executable, executable that you will get if you compile an Objective-C application. Kind of similar. Then what it does is it packages them, or it copies those executable files in your build directory of the application. And then beyond that, you have a full running app, uh, a compiled code and it also, if you are you know, archiving it, it will create an IPA file, which will be ready to push to App Store. There is a fourth optional step, which is code signing, which is not required when you are building or testing. It is required when you want to push it to App Store. Everyone would be interested in doing testing of your code. You definitely, everyone likes code testing because that's what we do. We love Ruby because it helps us to, to test our code. So RubyMotion, by default, comes bundled with an aspect-like framework, which is called MacBacon. So when we created the application for the first time, um, at the motion root, I call it motion root because that's the root of your application, uh, there is a spec directory, and it has a main underscore spec.rb file, which is a canary test. Um, everyone in this room understand what a canary test is, right? Okay, it's a default test um, that, that passes, you know, it, it, it has nothing. It is uh, an assertion that you are doing true is true. So it's, it's kind of a test that is a starting point of your application, which says that you, uh, your application is ready to be test. Uh, more tests can be added to your application. So when you say rake spec, um, 
Should I take the risk of doing the demo again? Okay. I'm taking the risk again. So let's look at the, in the spec directory, there is a main spec R file. Um, and let's open that. By the way, I did not mention um, there are a lot of IDs that support Ruby motion this right now. So if you see that, this is what it's testing. UI window, app.windows size, size, that should be equal to one, which is always true. It's never going to fail. So I'm 100% confident it's going to pass unless until my luck is really bad today. OK. So we will see that this uh, uh, simulator will launch again because it runs the test case in that environment. That kind of gives me a break to take water. Cool. So it passed, which we see at the bottom has one window, one specifications, one requirement, zero failures, zero errors. Nice. OK. So Mac, Mac Beacon has um, you know, almost all the syntactic sugar that we are accustomed to in our spec framework, um, which is your assertions, matchers, your before and after block. The one of the thing that I really like about Mac Beacon is um, that if you're building your interface in an interface builder um, of your Xcode, and if you want to test that, it gives a way to test your view as, views as well, which is nice. So it basically loads the nib, zip, or storyboard file whatever you may use in your application. While, while I was building application, there is, there was a, because it was for a client where we cannot push the application to test flight, we, there was a need that we should be able to share our application internally and ask our client to test it, which required that we set up a continuous integration, something like this. So this is very simple. Essentially, what it happens is the moment you check in the code, there is a webhook, web hook which uh, um, you know, is hooked to your Jenkins server, which was on a Mac Mini. Um, the important aspect to, to observe over here is the push that happens from Jenkins server to an app store that we have created internally. Um, and it uses deploy over the air technology of uh, Apple. And it, it is kind of an, a, a plist file that is created that helps you to download the application. So if you browse to app store, you will see an install button and you will be able to download the application on your device and then test it. So that was a kind of feedback loop that we were working with the client, and it has worked really well. Um, external libraries. Um, there, there are four ways to use external libraries in Ruby Motion. The first is Ruby Gems. Um, the second is the Objective C project itself. Second, third one is the Native C. So if you have any Native C application or library that you want to use in Ruby Motion, you can use it. And the fourth, fourth one is Cocoa Pods. Let's look at each of them individually. The first one is Ruby, Ruby gems. Normal Ruby gems won't work. That's a bummer. And why it won't work? Because Ruby motion is statically compiled. Um, and so normal Ruby gems of MRI is not going to work on Ruby gems. Ruby motion gems have to basically extend the configuration file. Uh, and it, any, the authors of Ruby motion gems have to take care of loading the files in motion project app block so that Ruby motion compiler knows that this particular gem has to be statically compiled and injected as the dependency inside the application. If you have you know, few gems, then definitely bundle is the, bundler is the default. Um, and you set up bundler, which is pretty straightforward. You create a gem file. Um, and then you basically require bundler in your rake file, because rake file is the entry point of you know, launching your application. The sec then. Uh, yeah, this is very important. Um, you know, Ruby Motion has been s accepted by the community, and I think there has been a lot of contributions from the community. And I would li like to you know list a few of the gems. Um, Bubble Wrap is at the top. You know, people love it. It's kind of helpers, which uh, reduces the verbosity of Objective C code. There is another one which is Teacup. I use Sugarcube. Teacup is a style sheet. It helps you to kind of uh, move away from you know building the interface from code. You can have style sheet way of you know presenting or creating the views, um, and then we have Sugarcube. You have Power Motion, 
The last two are the one that I created and contributed back. Using Objective-C code, so if you have, uh, there are two ways to use Objective-C code, by the way. The first one is the statically compiled, and the second one is, um, when you are doing a statically compiled, you basically include that particular directly in your vendor project of your application and declare it as static so that the compiler knows that it has to be compiled. The second one is the including the Xcode project itself. So if you have a, a working Xcode project, which is an Objective-C library that you want to hook in your application, similar in concept uh, as engines uh, in Rails world, you can do that, and after beyond that, it becomes uh, part of your application. Using native C code, um, the basic types in C uh, are basically in a map to all the Ruby types. Um, we all know that. Um, but complex data, data structures in C, uh, they don't have a corresponding Ruby data type. So essentially what you end up doing is uh, using bridge support uh, in Ruby Motion. Um, by default, uh, the latest version or other Lion comes with bridge support um, and you don't have to compile it. The, the, the next option is the Cocoa Parts. It's a dependency manager of, uh, of Objective-C projects. Um, and you, it's, it's a Ruby gem, you, you essentially just do a gem install Cocoa Parts and then you do a part setup. Well, part setup, I had to do it. Maybe you may not have to do it because my machine never worked without part setup. These are a list of all the parts that you can play with. Um, and then um, you have to install a motion Cocoa Parts gem for your Ruby motion application. And then you have to declare the dependency as we see in the screen. So you, you, if you want to use JSON kit Objective-C library, then you have to declare dependency in the rake file. So that's the, the four ways that you, you can use external libraries in your Ruby Motion application. It has a long way to go. Uh, Ruby Motion is just four months old, approximately. Um, there's something that it lacks. It lacks debugger. Um, but Ripple kind of rip is, is a nice way to you know, maybe don't need debugger. I, I kind of feel that debugger is required. Um, some of the dynamic code may not work, and, and actually it doesn't work, but hey, who cares? <laughs> Ruby Motion applications in App Store. Um, Everclip is the, was the first one. Um, Cabify is the second one. Uh, there are others that are coming up. Um, third one, uh, the order messed up. Survey is something that I'm going to push to App Store pretty soon. Um, and thank you. So one more thing, uh, which is a 15% discount. So if you want to play with Ruby Motion, um, just shoot me an email, and you'll get that discount of 15%. Okay. Cool. Th thank you very much. much. Thank you. Uh -huh. Great.